Welcome to another episode of your Technology Questions Answered. I'm your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. Zit Axis, for February 6th, 2011. And today we are talking about episode 19, Diagnosing Problems with Screens and Graphics Cards. Talking about a new video format change to our podcast. Oh no, not again. And the Subscribe and Win Contest finally comes to an end. So, just a note to everybody, for the next few episodes, I'll be talking about how to diagnose computer problems, how to do it from home, how to be your own makeshift technician, how to figure out what broke, how you broke it, how to fix it, and do it on the cheap, if at all possible. Now, here are the secrets you need to know about being a technician. A, the easiest way to diagnose anything is with a... Second computer, most likely a tower. That is the most convenient way of doing it. And or if you are literally, I would say, too mobile, you may use a netbook and or laptop. I use a netbook, laptop, and desktop to verify any of my clients' computers. And the reason is that I can verify virtually all hardware if I have all the correct hardware. Now, another thing is some computer problems are caused by people which I uh, would call, and people that know me would know that I would call them eco-freaks. I am very well aware that we need to protect our environments, and as I will always say, be careful with our environment because we are already screwed, and we don't want to be even more screwed in the future. Anything you need to throw away from a computer contains lead. Recycle correctly. Make sure it doesn't end up in a third world country designing somebody's lawn, poisoning the soil, and our water tables. So, for those who believe also when it comes to computer screens and computers, cleaning with acid and or vinegar is not a good idea. Keep the ammonia, the bleach, and the acid vinegars away from the computer. They will either help the computer or help your health. They will make leaching problems of the lead, and in the case of the screen, will actually screw the computer screen. I actually saw a case once where the guy's plasma was completely damaged on the bottom portion of the screen and the company of the warranty stated simply the easiest way to keep his screen fixed was to change his wife. Like I said, eco freaks, stay away from the screens and the computer with your crazy ecological stuff that do not work. Stay away. Stay very away. So let's start off with the first topic of the day. How do we figure out what blew in your computer? Your screen, your cable, or your graphics card? Let's start with the cable. Bearing in mind, if you have a pet, it may be the pet's fault. So instead of looking at Spot and telling him, bad boy, look at the cable first. Now, if the cable is fine from the visual outlook, both cables, by the way, they always include two, one for the video, one for the power. Both of them are okay. Take a set of cables from another computer and use those in place, if you know they work already. And this is to verify the integrity of the video channel and the power channel. If the new cables you just plugged in work in another computer and do not work in this computer, you either have a problem with your graphics card and or screen. Now how do you determine if there's a problem with the screen? Well that's easy. Like I said, you can use a laptop, a netbook, or a desktop to verify this. Plug in the screen into another device. Usually you need to turn off the other device first so that you can actually verify this. So turn off the computer, plug your computer screen into either your netbook, laptop, or desktop and power it on. If the screen works, Yay, you just diagnosed that the graphics card, graphics card may be the issue. But if it doesn't work, you just determined the screen needs to be changed. You can actually send the screen back to the company, like in my case, and you'll get a new one and or repair it. This all depends on the warranty laws inside your country, United States, sorry, but it's fix only. In Canada, yay, replace at all costs. So every time I send something that is broken in Canada back to the manufacturer, I get a brand new one, including the Xbox, by the way. Now, if you have determined the screen is not the issue and that it is indeed your graphics card, you need to verify one of two things. Is it the graphics card? Is it the driver? 
Now, this is very easy to figure out. If your computer, when you boot on, just goes incessantly beeping, and or the screen just stays dead black, it is the graphics card. But if you power it on, you see something loading, and then it goes into the windows and just dies, that is the driver. How do you replace the driver? Easy. While you're in DOS loading up your computer, just after the BIOS actually finishes, hit the F8 button incessantly until it goes beeping out of its mind because a level 2 cache actually fills up with the F8 command, and go into safe mode. Uninstall the video card's graphic card driver and turn the computer back on. It will auto detect the graphics card. Now, if you didn't see anything whatsoever, not even the BIOS logo, remove the graphics card very gently. How do we do this? Very carefully. I'm not kidding. You are going to have to remember several things about messing into your computers throughout the next few episodes. You need to unplug the computer from the wall. You do not want to electrocute yourself. A USB port contains 100 milliamps of power. I believe you only need two to have a heart attack. So, unplug from the wall. Second, you're going to have to ground yourself. Any amount of static electricity that you may contain may damage parts and or all of your computer. How to get rid of the static electricity that we may potentially have? That is very simple. Simply touch the casing of the box before touching any other piece inside the computer. Thirdly, most graphics cards are held in by a Phillips screwdriver or a cross type tip. You're going to need only this kind of screwdriver to unscrew it. Do not use a pocket knife or some other crazy tool you've seen around. And for any other crazy people, do not use a pair of scissors either. This may damage the graphics card. So, using a Phillips screwdriver, if there's no clip simply that you can unclip like my computer box, unscrew. And before you start pulling incessantly like a crazy person on the graphics card, please bear in mind that since the technology and advent of AGP, all AGP and PCI Express cards on the motherboard have a locking mechanism. Unlock lock mechanism, the locking mechanism from the graphics card and pull gently with equal force across the whole card, at which point the card will be free. Do not put this graphics card on any surface that may cause a potential problem. My personal suggestion would be put the graphics card on wood. Knocking on wood and putting hardware on wood is very beneficial to there is no static problem. Putting anything on a surface that potentially has a static issue may render the hardware damaged. Do not put it on plastic is basically what I'm telling you. Now, if you have another graphics card, plug that into your computer and power on. If your computer powers on, your computer's not at fault, it's actually the graphics card. Now, if you put another graphics card in and it doesn't work, that'll be next week's episode. Now, if the graphics card is the issue, go back to your computer store and get a brand new one. At this point, please leave this graphics card there to be recycled correctly through the correct environmentally friendly channels to prevent lead poisoning of our environments. Now, I did say that we changed our video format. Oh no, and not again. Now, last week we had tried and actually experimented with the M4V format. You may know this is Apple's format for their iPad, iPhone, Apple TV, which by the way is buggy at best, and some other other Apple products. Now, the M4V does give me a file size reduction. It does not give me the file size reduction I was looking for. So, I have now opted for what I actually believe is one of the best file type options that I have ever used. The Sony PSP H.264 file format. Reducing my files certain from 280 megs all the way down to about 80 megs. Basically, I have a savings of 63% in file size by going down to this format. The image is clean, viewable on virtually every MP4 enabled device 
course, my show is available through YouTube, which is on every single YouTube-enabled device. So don't forget about that. You don't need to download if you can get YouTube on it. And, of course, we have MP3 file formats of every single episode downloadable directly from our website and or iTunes and FeedBurner. And I did say I was going to announce a winner. If I had 1,000 people subscribe and register to my contest, unfortunately, we have fallen short. So there is no winner. What's going to happen to the prize? Somebody's probably asking out there. Well, people... I'm not some sorry bastard. I basically have another contest coming up, and this will be one of the secondary prizes. Yes, secondary prizes. But what is it that he's talking about as a contest? Only I will know this week. You're going to have to listen on to next week when I actually maybe have actually filled out all the details of my next contest. But it will actually favor the graphic artist within you. So if you need to figure out what I'm talking about for the contest and you would love to have some nice prizes because I'm going to have more than just one prize this time, listen on to the next future episodes. If you're listening on YouTube, like this episode, favorite, comment down below. Yes, I have no more forum on my website. If you need to post any comments, questions, or stories, you may go through the contact form on my website at www.zedaxis.net, but if you're already on YouTube, you may actually comment down below my video, and or on the channel, actually. So, next week, by the way, we'll be ep doing episode 20, Diagnosing Motherboard Issues. So if you want to know how to diagnose computer on the cheap, Come back next week, Sunday, 8 a.m., and I'll explain more on how to figure out what broke. I am Steve Smith, a.k.a. Z-Axis. Let's see you next week.